Before Formula 2, there was GP2. The final rung on the ladder before Formula 1, GP2 was the last chance to prove you had what it took to reach the pinnacle of motorsport. GP2's success rate was very good, as a large number of champions and non-champions eventually went on to race in Formula 1. However, not everyone was so lucky. Lack of money, bad timing and plain bad luck could often prevent drivers from advancing, even if they had the talent, and sometimes even winning the title wasn't enough to overcome this. There is a driver who won the title, but unlike fellow GP2 champions such as Nico Rosberg, Lewis Hamilton and Stoffel van Dorn, never raced in Formula 1 and then vanished into obscurity. This is the story of Fabio Lima. Fabio Lima began his karting career in his native Switzerland in 2003 at the age of 14. Three years later he advanced into single-seaters with Formula BMW ADAC with Team Rosberg before switching to Matson Motorsport for the final three rounds, scoring four points and finishing 19th in the standings. In 2007 he joined Jensen Motorsport in both Euro Cup and Italian Formula Renault, finishing 17th in the standings in the former and scoring two podiums and finishing 11th in the latter. He stayed with Jenser in 2008 and moved up to International Formula Master, where he got three wins, one pole position and three fastest laps and finished second, 22 points behind champion Chris van der Drift, while teammate Matej Mihesko was 23rd. He made a second attempt in 2009 and this time won seven of the 16 races and comfortably won the championship by 38 points from Sergei Afanasyev. After this triumph, he joined Ocean Racing Technology in the GP2 Asia series, but never finished any higher than 15th and was 31st in the standings out of 34 drivers. He then did a full campaign with Ocean Racing Technology in the GP2 series itself for 2010. He finished 8th in the feature race of the opening round at Catalunya and then won the sprint race and got fastest lap, but beyond this scored no further points and finished 19th in the standings. He moved to Team Rapax in 2011 and finished 5th in a shortened GP2 Asia series with no races in Bahrain due to the Arab Spring protests and in the main championship replicated his previous year's performance by finishing 8th in the Catalonia feature race and winning the sprint race but beyond this scored no further points until the final round at Monza where he finished 7th in the feature race and 2nd in the sprint race and was 14th in the standings while teammate Julian Lille scored no points and was 27th. He then moved to Team Racing Engineering. A non-championship round was run at Yas Marina at the end of 2011 to support the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, and he took pole and the win in the feature race and finished 10th in the sprint race. A few days later, he then got his first taste of Formula 1 by driving for Sauber on the first day in the Young Drivers Test. In 2012, he failed to get any wins in GP2, but scored points much more consistently and was on the podium six times and finished seventh in the standings, 92 points ahead of teammate Nathaniel Berton in 12th. He stayed with Racing Engineering in 2013. His season initially started well as he won the feature races at the Sepang and Bahrain rounds, but then failed to score any points in the next five races. From the Nürburgring round onwards, however, he regularly scored points and started closing in on Stefano Coletti, who had started the season incredibly strongly but failed to score any points from here onwards, and he took the lead in the championship after winning the Monza feature race and eventually won the title by 20 points from Sam Bird, despite winning only three races across the year. He naturally then set his sights on Formula 1. Previous GP2 champions Nico Rosberg, Lewis Hamilton, Timo Glock, Nico Hülkenberg, Pastor Maldonado and Roman Grosjean had all immediately moved up, but champions Giorgio Pantano and Davide Valsecchi had not, and ultimately the same happened to Lima. He was not a member of any driver academies, and while there were 12 vacant seats when he won the GP2 title, they all quickly disappeared. He attempted to get a seat with Sauber, who he had previously tested with, with his long-term sponsor Rainier Gantebin offering the team $14 million to race, but it was still less than half of what Esteban Gutierrez was offering. As a reward for winning GP2, he did get to do a Pirelli tyre test of Lotus at Paul Ricard in May. As he had won the GP2 title, he was now no longer permitted to race in it, so he joined Rebellion Racing in the LMP1L category of the World Endurance Championship, partnering Andrea Bellici and Dominic Cryhammer. They retired from the first four rounds, including the 24 hours of Le Mans, but won three of the final rounds in class and he finished 17th in the Drivers' Championship. 
He was initially without a drive in 2015, and almost secured a seat with Team Mugen in Super Formula in Japan, which fell through due to a lack of money, but began to make some progress with his Formula 1 ambitions, as at the Canadian Grand Prix in June he was announced as a test and reserve driver for backmarker Team Mano Arusha. A few weeks later, he got his first experience of Formula E by filling in for an unwell Jaime Aljaswari at Virgin Racing at the final round in London, qualifying last and finishing 14th in the first race and qualifying 17th and crashing out of the second. He made regular appearances in the Formula 1 paddock for the rest of the year in his role of Mana Marussia, but drove the car only once, which was in FP1 at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Despite being reserve driver, when Roberto Meri was dropped, it was Alexander Rossi who replaced him, with Meri then coming back for the rounds where Rossi had to concentrate on his own GP2 campaign. The team came under new management in 2016, and like with Will Stevens, Rossi and Meri, Lima was barely given a shoe-in for a race seat, and he had now lost Gantebin's financial support as it was becoming increasingly clear that Formula 1 was not going to happen. For 2016, he instead raced for Team Octane 126 in three of the seven rounds of the Ferrari Challenge Europe in the Trofeo Pirelli Pro Class category. He won one race and finished second in four others and was fifth in the standings, and finished a disappointing 20th at the Finale Mondiale event at Daytona. He also returned to karting by winning the senior category of the Swiss Karting Championship. He raced again for Octane 126 in 2017 in three of the seven rounds and won one race and finished sixth in the standings, and then won the Finale Mondiale, now held at Mugello. At the end of 2017, at the age of 28 and a mere four years after winning the GP2 series, Lima retired from active motorsport. He began doing a small amount of commentary and punditry work for the Swiss coverage of the World Endurance Championship and Formula E, but has been inactive on social media since 2018. Without his GP2 triumph, Fabio Lima's career record would not look particularly out of the ordinary. Modest success in GP2 followed by spells in WEC and Formula E are fairly common, but it's quite shocking to see a GP2 champion have such an uninspired and short professional career. There was little to no interest in him from any of the Formula 1 teams. Admittedly, it was one of the least competitive GP2 seasons in history, as the only drivers competing that year to ever make Formula 1 were Felipe Nazza, Marcus Ericsson, Jolion Palmer, Alexander Rossi and Rio Harianto. Manama Russia were a dead end as they had limited finances and an uncompetitive car, and again showed little desire to give him any track time. He had an opportunity to carve out a career in Formula E, a series mostly filled with former F1 drivers and other failed F1 hopefuls, but did little to impress in his two races. He had one wealthy benefactor but had otherwise struggled to secure any major sponsors, and this ultimately was the issue. He couldn't fall back on showing prodigious levels of talent when his finances wouldn't get him anywhere, and at the end of the day, it shows how important money has become in this sport. That's all for this video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at brook underscore F1, and I'll see you all next time.